Hey, what's up? Today I want to share with you three very easy tips that you can follow to write better, cleaner code for your games. Now, these aren't things that require you to be a genius or some mega mind or anything like that. These are easy things that you can apply even if you're a beginner, and you should definitely be applying by the time you're at the intermediate or advanced level. Now, if you're following along and you see some things that maybe don't make sense or you think that there are some other tips that people should uh, maybe follow as well, drop a comment down below and let me know. And before we get started, don't forget to like, subscribe, and also check out Game Dev Guild, an online conference that I'm putting on in a couple months. I think it's something that you might be very interested in if you're into game development, especially Unity development. So let's get started with these three tips. The first one is, well, something that took me a while to actually start doing myself. It's something that people told me I should be doing, something that I think everybody should do right away, but it didn't really make a lot of sense to me at first. And that's following some standard coding conventions. Now, it doesn't really matter what coding conventions you're following, and I'll dive a little bit deeper into what coding conventions are, what they mean, and what ones I would use, but it doesn't matter specifically what coding conventions you use. The important part is that you standardize and use the same conventions along throughout all of your projects, or at least throughout one project and maybe Maybe you want to switch between projects, but I recommend that you find something good and stick with it throughout all of your projects. So what does this mean? What are coding standards? If you do a quick search for coding standards document, you'll probably find quite a few. Search for C-sharp. It'll narrow it down a little bit more. And if you search for Unity ones, you'll see that there aren't too many, but again, I'll link some down below. And the coding standards documents are going to outline how you write your code, what the standard is for your code. And that means what your variables look like. Are they Pascal case or camel case? They start with big letters or small letters? Do you use underscores to separate variable names or method names? Do you use underscores at the beginning? Now, the reason this is important is because you want your code to be familiar. You want it to be like when you're going through all of your different code files, it all kind of feels and seems the same, like you're reading a book from the same author, not like you're reading some disjointed thing that was written in multiple languages and then updated with Google Translate or something. You really want to keep things standardized and clean. This can also affect things like the formatting of your files, where you keep your variables, keeping them all at the top, or maybe you keep them in some specific order. These things do make a big difference, and again, they're very easy to do because you don't have to be like some sort of magician or wizard. You just got to think like, hey, let's follow the same standard that I used before. In fact, I think it's a little bit easier because you don't have to come up with how things are. You just do it exactly the same way you did it last time. And the other big benefit comes from when you want to share your stuff. If you're using some standardized coding standards or some common coding standards like ones that I'll link down below, people will innately or instantly kind of recognize what stuff is. They'll know if you put an underscore in front of a field name, it's probably a private field. If you went all caps, it's probably some sort of constant or static thing. They're going to have at least some good clue and indicator. And as long as you follow that standard throughout your project, they won't get confused. The worst thing that you can do is mix and match where you've got Pascal case and camel case properties and fields and everything's just kind of willy nilly doing it however you want. Anything you can do to avoid that is going to make a big difference. So following some simple coding standards huge, huge help. Again, if you want some, I'll link something down below. And if you have some coding standards docs that you think people should use, maybe you've got them posted online, drop them down below too. And I'll try to get those shared out as well. The second tip is a little bit more complicated, but it's not really as complex as it sounds. And that is to keep your classes small or write small classes. And when I say small, I generally mean that a class should be under 200 lines. If it starts to reach 100 lines, I start to think like, hey, maybe this class is doing a little bit too much. Maybe not. Maybe it's okay. When it hits 200, I start to think, okay, this probably should be split out. There's probably a little bit too much going on. Now, that might seem crazy. You might be like, oh, 200 lines. You can't do anything in 200 lines. But the way that you can go about this and make this happen is relatively simple or the tip that I want to share. And that's when you go to add in some new functionality to a class, say you're working on your player class or your enemy class or whatever it is, and you're adding some new functionality to it, instantly think to yourself, does this new functionality 
need any of these fields or methods already on the class. The one that I'm just about to add this functionality to, does it need these fields or methods or am I just adding on new fields and methods and I'm not actually using any of the existing ones? If that's the case, it very likely is a great candidate for a separate class. It could probably be split out into something different. Maybe you're working on an enemy and you want to modify some stats. It's movement speed or it's um, maybe it's strength. Maybe you've just got some generic stats. You start to add that into the enemy, think like, hey, does this actually need anything from the enemy? The answer is no. Your stat system shouldn't need anything from your enemy. In fact, what you'd want to do is set it up so that it's referenced the other way, so that your enemy can reference your stat system. So if your enemy needs something from a stat that you're going to go create, it can just reference the stat system, ask the stat system for that thing. And this is how you kind of start separating objects out. Just remember, think about when you're writing the code. Does this need stuff that's already in this class? If not, would it make do as a better class or as a separate class? Would it be better as a separate class or could it work as a separate class? And if so, then give that a try, see if it works. Sometimes it doesn't work. You got to pull it all back in and refactor and undo it. Totally fine, but give it a shot and see if you can split it out. The last tip is one that I've talked about a lot. And I guess in the past I've said it was difficult, but to be honest, it's not that difficult to get started with. It's just difficult to do well. And that is naming things properly or naming things well. And I think that a better way to put this is really just to name things intentionally. When you name objects or you name variables and classes and in your game and in your code, there's really a tendency, or at least a habit when you're starting out, to just name it whatever. Name it A, name it B, name it A1, B2, or name it random thing or whatever. And that becomes totally fine if you're looking at your code in just this little method. You've got a little tiny chunk of code, you're learning it and figuring it out, a little tiny variable name makes sense. But as you start to build out bigger projects, you build out real games, you're going to find that little tiny variable names are the bane of your existence. They will make things a nightmare because you don't know what they are. You'll often mis misuse them, misunderstand what they are, confuse one thing with another. You'll confuse health with the max health or the health and the uppercase health and the health one and health two or whatever. You really got to like separate these things out. And I said max health. Max health would be a reasonable name, but I've seen things like health and health zero. I'm like, oh wait, which one's the actual health? You don't know. Or H and H1 or H max. Like, what the heck is this? So bad names are really, really bad. They make a huge difference. So let's talk just really briefly about what good names are. And I've done some full videos on it. You probably find those just by searching for my name and naming conventions or something. But some good names, they tend to be descriptive. Good names of objects tend to be nouns and good names of methods are verbs. So a method is doing something. It should be named for the thing that it's doing. And a class is an object. So it should be named for the type of object that it is as with the instance of it. Plural things should be named plural. If you have enemies, name them enemies. Don't name it enemy. No, name it enemies and make things plural. And use names that are very specific to what the thing is. Bigger names tend to be better than shorter names. If the names get to be enormous, then shorten them down and don't add it in duplicate scope. So don't have like the player player controller or something like that. Shorten it down to just the player controller. But you get the idea. Short names, good names. Do a little bit of research on names. And the most important part, don't be afraid to rename things. I am constantly renaming not just variables, not just methods, but classes as well. The hotkey and writer and Visual Studio, control R, control R, so you just hold down control, hit R twice, pops up the rename dialog and allows you to rename stuff. F2 also works in a lot of code editors. Figure out what your rename key is, start using it. It will make a huge difference. You'll end up with better and better code. If you realize how easy it is and how fast you can just improve stuff by fixing a bad name or a name that's a little bit confusing, you ever look at your code and go, what is that again? Rename that object. Give it a new name and you'll be happier. All right, I hope this was helpful. Please like, subscribe, share the video. Go check out Game Dev Guild while it's still available. And my game architecture course, which will also be linked down below. All right, see you next time.